yeah, that's something that you don't get very easily. They have a brotherhood that is very, very, very hard to break apart because they all came together. How often do you see that? Often you see one player or two player being picked up from the second tier and they're fighting for their lives. These guys are fighting for each other's lives and they, because they've been fighting to get here to begin with, they all have this loyalty and this bond that is so hard to break. That's how every single team that's like really, really exploded, they have a super strong bond and I think Ems have that. And these guys have a lot of talent as well. Yeah. You know, it's not just the individual players and they have some exceptionally gifted individual players. You know, Skies, for example, has been a player that's on the radar of a lot of the French teams as we need to get him. They've not got him because Ents have taken them into, into Pro League as a, you know, as a unit, but they also have extremely good team play. They have extremely good fundamentals. They won the Southbridge tournament with EUL teams in it, beating out eight tier one teams to win a tournament. That's no mean feat. Now for these two teams, we said that they played against each other quite a few times. They played a best of five against each other. They played two best of threes against each other. And today they're playing a best of one against each other. So let's have a look at the map veto and see which map we are going to out of our nine map pool. So our very first map of our six Europe League stage one in 2024 will be Clubhouse. Things never change. Yeah, some things never change. And I think this isn't so much a surprise. We said these two teams have played each other. They've played each other in two best of threes and a best of five. In all those times, the decider map would have been Clubhouse. They didn't get there a couple of times. When they have played on Clubhouse, it was the one that Valor, as they were then known, or Ent, they actually beat Secret 7-1. So it's a map they've got history on and know each other on. And it, if you, it makes sense, right? If you're a new team coming into the league, you want to be on a very fundamentally sound map. Also, it's a benefit that you've played your and beaten your opponent on that map. Yeah, but the biggest thing I think for Ents right now, they start defense. Coming into the league as the newcomers and then starting on the way more comfortable side where you don't have to make too many decisions. Most of your decisions are pre-planned reactions to the pushes that your opponent will make. So it's super, super comfortable position for Ents to be in. I think it, it's looked really good for them. I know you have a lot of information on what happened previously between these teams, like yeah. the, who won what specific matchup. But for today, what are the predictions between these two for this matchup? I have a feeling Secret will take this. I think recency bias from the Malta games would kind of tell you that Secret would take this. However, there'll be a huge caveat. Both games in Malta went to overtime. That could have very easily been a 2-0 to end as well. So I think Secret have, in theory, the better firepower, a little bit more of an established team in this level. And then if they sort the roles out, I think they've got higher potential at the minute as well. I think the nerves will be there for Ants. I still believe in them though, just because they have come as a five or as a six even. I believe in Ants here. I think that they have the side that they want to start on. They're comfortable. They've played with each other for so long. Secret aren't as comfortable, I think, because they haven't played each other with each other for so long. And also, as you say, roles might have changed. So it's a lot of new things for a lot of players in Secret, while nothing is new for the players in Ants. That is true. And of course, if we talk about uh, ENS as well, them being new to Europe League, it means that we haven't really seen this place before if you haven't kept track of them in these other tournaments. Fabian, which are the players that we need to focus on when it comes to the main Fregan department? I mean, I think that Skies and Rikos are outstanding players here. Even back when I was coaching G2, I was looking at these players as potential replacements because you always scout players when you're working as a coach. That doesn't mean that I was going to replace all the G2 players. It means that I was looking for what if, what if someone gets taken out of the team or someone doesn't want to play here anymore? What do we have as replacements? And both of those players stood out massively even back then. And if I can look at them as players that potentially could go into, well, world champions at that point, how good can they actually be? Like they have the fragging power, they have the individual intelligence when it comes to playing their roles. So they're outstanding players and I think that they would have a really good game today. It's the six man roster for me that's really intriguing. I'll, like I'll be honest is we don't see it every day. We see teams that have brought in substitutes, you know, yeah. for if a player oversleeps or something like that. But we don't see an active six man roster. And it actually makes me wonder whether, you know, Azox will be in or out depending on maps or opponents. And Jax will be in or out depending on maps or opponents. In theory, if you explore that idea, it could mean that you have a lot of strengths where you've got a player that, you know, might be a little bit more supportive if you play in a map like Clubhouse or Skyscraper where you need a player that's more focused on breaching, that type of stuff. Or if you need a player that's more fragging and you're on more fragging map, then you put that player in. But it's a very, it's a very weird dynamic that we don't usually see in Siege. There's one thing they have to watch out for, and this is actually a rule that was created because back in year two, season one, when I played with a six-man roster in Penta, we were actually swapping players in between maps in best of three. So if Enz makes it that far, they've actually changed the rules. You're no longer allowed to have changes between players between maps, which means that if they make it to best of threes, they need to decide the five rather than the map who plays what. Yeah. So there's a lot of questions that needs to be asked here. I think they kind of need to decide on a five because I also think that, well, you're missing practice with one player all the time, so you never get a feel of 
every single map with that player, you kind of have to cement the five eventually. Maybe they're not that comfortable with that yet. Yeah, it's worth saying. We, you know, we spoke to them. We asked them, is this a sub situation or a six-man roster? They said six-man roster, but didn't provide a lot of additional detail. So we're kind of just going to have to wait and see what happens over, you know, over the course of the league. Maybe they want to keep some secrets for us uh, coming into this league, but we should have our very first game ready. And our casters for today are Ace and Desna. It's so good to see you two. How are you feeling today on the very first day of Europe League? Absolutely fantastic being back with EU. Just feels like it feels right, right? The world's getting back to a good place again. Can't wait for today to get underway. Yeah, it's going to be good. Uh, you know, this is where we want to be. This is, you know, some of the pinnacle of Siege that we're going to see over the next few weeks. And we get to enjoy it all firsthand. We got a wonderful game to start out, of course, as well. Ends versus Secret. That'll be yours to take. Good luck and have fun. I'm sure we will, and we always do our very, very best to make sure it's an enjoyable time. Hello, everyone. Welcome over to the virtual casting desk at this point. My name's Des. This is Tim. Tim, I've already had that conversation, but how are you feeling today, buddy? Oh, I'm good, Des. Absolutely bounced out of bed, as I always do on an EUL this. play day. A lot of excitement today. A lot of new players, new orgs, just everything going on. But not a new map, Des. A nice old one for us. Well... The funny thing is, we've cast Japan all weekend, and the only map we didn't cast in Japan was Clubhouse. So now in our first nine maps of the 2024 Siege calendar, we've cast every single map, which feels absolutely brilliant. We haven't even done the same map twice so far, which feels a little bit mental, but I'm here for it. Absolutely. I'm here for a bit of Clubhouse then between Enz and Secret. Enz, of course, an organization that a lot of the older eSport fans are going to remember. Um, it's already been touched upon. It was, um, you know, back in the days where we had Wilkie as the captain. We had Boonsie, Gonfi, we had Slevin, um, we had Shate. You know, it was... I used to love watching Enz, so it was an org that I'm really excited to see get back into Siege. And uh, yeah, we'll see how they get on with their first matchup today. As they've touched on on the desk, a, a roster that's already seen some success in South Breach, you know, going in there, beating Secret. So there's a lot to play for today. There is. I mean, if nothing else, we said the same thing about the Japan League on Saturday. It's that first day when everything can go just a little bit pear-shaped for a couple of teams, and there's plenty of times to get things course-corrected, especially when there are things like roster changes coming on through. And I think, as Fresh said, he feels like a proud dad today, right? Adrian stepping in, getting his chance up here as well. Yes, he's been put on a couple of mixed roles previously, but stepping up into the European League feels like a little bit of a different conversation. It's a different ball game altogether, and this I'm hoping is where he'll really, really get to shine. Bands are coming on through thick and fast, though. Seeing the Ying taken away completely unsurprisingly there, Tim. I was looking back at the last time these two teams played, and on this exact map, we saw Ying and Solus banned away by Ents, then known as Team Valor. Nothing has changed from that last matchup. However, for Secret, both of their bands have changed. See the impact that it has then. The Ram ban being slightly less popular than maybe some other attackers. Um, but anywhere that you're going to use verticality, which there's a bit more than verticality at stake here on Clubhouse. Yes, especially if you're attacking onto Church, um, you're going to use a lot of those verticals. It's really the only site realistically we're going to see because we're not likely to see uh, bar and stop, which would be the other one that you could use the verticals on. But the thing is, a lot of those verticals can be accessed from windows, from doors, basically risk-free. So the RAM allows you to just launch in that boogie drone through the window, through the door, say, you know, into kitchen corridor, for example, can be done external to the map. Inside a kitchen can be done from the window, just inside a freezer. It makes it pretty safe and pretty free to open them all up. So by taking other way the RAM, you're sort of forcing the book as well. You're forcing the sledge. You're making them come into a little bit of danger. You can get those nitros up there. Maybe you find something. I completely agree. I mean, it's one thing I always look at when I see a RAM band away and just think, you know, is it worth it? Because as you say, the Buck and the Sledge are a thing. Yes, they're more risky to play, but Buck can do a lot of the same sort of things that you see the round do, arguably even more because he can bring along those hard breach gadgets, only the smokes and the stuns available in the back pocket of RAM. So it really does come down, I think, to that safety element, but also not ignoring the ridiculous amount of noise that we see those boogies making at the same time. In case you're wondering what's going on, I think we all saw at the very, very start there, didn't get every single player into the service, so getting that sorted out, and then we'll be able to get things underway 
with this game. But Tim, I guess the nice thing that we've got as a bit of a blessing, like mentioned earlier on, is we've passed the Japan League all weekend. We've seen some wonderful stuff so far after this new season has got underway, of course, with Deadly Omen really coming in. We saw a little bit of Deimos. We've seen a lot of shield play for some very good players. And as the guys in the de desk touched on, I'm really keen to see how many teams have not so much mastered, but really taken up that mantle of becoming real experts with these new shields and pushing them to their max potential. Yeah, I think the, I think the shield change is going to be something that we will see a bit more of than than maybe Deimos. Um, as you said, over in Japan, we did actually see some Deimos bans as well, um, but not too much of an impact. It's an interesting, um, you know, alternative option that we saw used on Deimos, which is something you might see brought in um, to pro play elsewhere. Was that because the Vendetta is so good? as a pistol you can take gunfights with it on its own they're actually bringing the shotgun as the primary and sort of using him as like a bit of a makeshift book but then with this other ability of being able to track people it was like the the sort of book jackal combo um almost you know not doing either of the jobs perfectly but rolling them into one um so yeah it was a fascinating one it's one that we might see we might not it's always an interesting thing with international siege how things travel from region to region or you know some regions just don't bother with things where others will give it a go. So we'll see if that comes out, but we don't have any Deimos on the board to worry about right now. Not but right now, they'll give it a few more rounds and you may well find someone start speeding their chance. And I think very fairly so, as Fresh pointed out, there's a little bit of criticism levered in towards Secret. Why would you pick up a player like Adrian and then force him onto hard support or into shield-based roles? Well, it turns out they're sticking by their guns for now. He is going to be on the offset in this first round. And as you say, that buck coming along, no surprises at all with the Grand Band away gonna have Groovy applying that little bit of pressure in through Jacuzzi wanting to take that top floor quickly only 50 seconds in and ends are being forced back slowly but surely we can see Skies dropping down to the bottom of main June getting in and doing some work on the hatches so this is really good so far from Team Secret they're making a lot of progress and they're making it quickly what they need to do is make sure that they're also paying attention to those danger areas like the top of main stairs Skies you can see is absolutely itching on there to go up and have a pop at somebody inside a kitchen corridor. I'm really playing at a long range here as well, Savage. See, sometimes you'll have defenders playing up there and looking to keep the hatch closed up and forcing right. the attackers to have to go and take top floor. For a while, I was looking in towards, say, Frenchy, and uh, I think it was out towards Azox as well. I'm wondering whereabouts they were trying to play. They were looking to be more actually up on the level rather than so much downstairs at this point. I think they are fully back out towards Blue here, got themselves dug in. And that really gives us now half the round where Secret can have all of their focus going down onto the sites themselves and not having to worry about would-be roamers. And I say that, they're still being mindful potentially of that oil ladder, just being respectful in case someone is trying to get a little bit cheeky to get towards the last big thing. You see them just trying to deal with that ash. wall and the mirror window. Yeah, you've got to get that ash absolutely spot on. I actually had it happen against me today. If it catches the soft wall, the mirror window will stay intact. It has to drill into the glass. For anybody who hasn't seen that change, it's fairly recent. Um, any drilling gadget, which would basically be Cali and Ash, are able to shatter the mirror window. So there you go. As you can see, much the same if you walk up a melee from the other side, you're going to get that same effect. So that's mirror mm. window dealt with, but... The Nitro is in hand for Rykos. It is. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he's got the right sort of idea as well. A good step away by Jim, I believe that was, up on the hatch. I'm looking at that small bit over the top of the wall and thinking you can fit a C4 through there. It'll normally always catch, but Adrian is in. The main stairs push has come on through and we've got that plant going down to him. It's a 4v4 in the post plant. Yeah, Adrian successfully gets that one no, down. Is able magazine. to play from behind the Talon shield, but here Defender comes Enz. They the are on the retake. Adrian is just going to be using that little bit of safety that he's got. And what a beautiful headshot as he peeks around. Can oh, he manage yeah. a second? It's going to a ring around the roses. He gets his man, though. That's a double for Adrian. Can he make it a triple? He knows where the last one is. Going to try and hold him off, but Only down one. to him versus Nako. Oh, and at this point, Nako has got no impacts to make use of either as well. This shield stays put. And at this point, with only 10 seconds to go, he's got to get a kill right here and right now. But Adrian, that's what you want to see. Doesn't matter what you chuck him on, Tim. He's still going to find himself a multi-kill in round one. Yeah, a nice triple there. Great to kick things off for Secret. Just using that Talon shield perfectly. First of all, to create the cover to allow the diffuser to go down without any real threat and then uses it in the post plant. It can always be a little bit risky sitting on top of your diffuser because that's where the most pressure is going to come from. But Adrian, choosing that wisely, it was a perfect spot given that he had that shield to cover him and he used it.
it beautifully with the rotate. Excellent play, secret, 1-0. Yeah, really good start. Really like how they approached the round as well itself. It looked a little bit tentative at points. A lot of focus around Kitchen, a lot around Main Stairs. Three or four players all grouped yeah. up. And on this side, particularly where you're looking at a Moto drop, a Main Stairs push, potentially pushing in through Kitchen. Someone stabbing down the back through Blue as well. There are normally these multi-point pushes that you get on towards this site, but a very focused one coming out from Team Secret and one that very clearly has rewarded them. Instead, relying on those angles, relying on the, I want to quite call them crossfires, but just making sure they've got the spots yeah, held down flash. so Adrian could just run from the bottom of the main stairs, straight in through the wall, get the plant down, and the rest, as they say, is history. But now that we go to the top floor, we're going to see ourselves in gym and bedroom on this next fence team, and naturally we're going to see this extension out towards the east side of the map. Attackers really want control of this part of the map so they can get over get control of the cc west window that looks over on that south balcony without it you are just always under threat from defenders and it removes a major part of the attack onto this site for the attackers unless you get it cleared out and establish control of it yeah gonna be a big fight over top red given the cctv wall has been opened quickly i like that from the attackers um if nothing else it prevents the defenders from playing inside a cctv even if you don't manage to claim the ground it makes it a big risk for them to peek onto those windows so it's a good sort of half step but they now need to push forward and really clear out top red so they can do it completely securely and move on through to construction nico is still going to be in position with the cross with the shield can't find the kill though is going to challenge, but he's going to be taken down. It's Adrian no. once again, carries on his three, makes it a four over two rounds. And that is a great entry for Secret. Starts them just moving across the top floor of that map. They can start now pressuring Skies. He's going to dip away, knows that it's time to play his life and not to challenge that one too hard. So Team Secret can now get control of cash and think about construction. And a pretty good spot over here, it seems. Maybe that big push in there, getting rid of that frost playing at top red starts to make things feel very, very fragile on the extended hold coming out for Entz. Somewhat expected though, and like remarks earlier on, this now gives control of that south balcony. To start pressing their way into sight from these windows, both sides as well, both the master and the gym window now available for them to play. And you can see through the back end of your screen there, all four players otherwise stacked over towards the east. But you'll see that slowly starts to enroach in towards construction here as they start eyeing up a plant. Adrian just going to be sending in the utility through the drone hole. There's a little bit of burn, I think, as all part of trying to get this wall open. They had such a good start, did TNT's career. Really quick, got red stairs locked down, moved into cash, and took that map control but since then it's all just slowed down a little bit we can see now that the wall is likely to be open but at 50 seconds Ooh. not sure if that has actually happened nope Damn. it's been tricked Massive. out so yeah. off adrian goes and they're gonna have to go back to the drawing board team secret yeah, this is really not ideal. They were relying, I think, on that for the backstab into this attack to upset the back line. Instead, they've got plan number two coming out here, though, Tim. Looking for this book on the push-up main stairs. Got to be careful. There's the f that right there by the feet as well. And at this point, being held so tight, the sprint away should know about this one. Azox should know he's coming up and Savage hits the deck. Can't find anyone a double kill for himself in the round two. Only one left standing. It's Adrian to bring the lot of skies. He's onto a 3k in the round, Tim. Yeah, unlikely here for Adrian. One versus three. He does get shut down Four. by Skies at the top of main. A big ask of the Thermite there at the end. Just for me, Secret didn't have enough, um, you know, plans in place to deal with that gym wall. They didn't get it open. They were out there on Jacuzzi for a good minute after, like I said, that great early progress. You want that double-sided push. Yes, get yourself CCTV. Yes, get yourself into cash. But that has to allow you and facilitate you to open Jacuzzi Wall and start applying pressure from the other side. Otherwise, they're just going to front you up like they did. Absolutely. I mean, again, let's not take it away from him. Sky's a big 4K in the round two, just really locking down that site and giving absolutely nothing over to the other side. I think obviously now think about it. Actually, Azor's got the two, got the 2K. Sky's got the four at the very last as well. So one of those kills would have been onto a down player. It would have been Savage probably on those main stairs. But either way, Big round coming out from the two of them there to keep things up on one-on-one. -on -one. And now we're going to see a repeat of that downstairs sight, Tim. Can't imagine Secret will try the same thing again. However, you never know, and it's going to be on Ents to be the ones to adapt. I'd like to see them getting out around the map a little bit more here, at least in the early round. If nothing else, to chew out a few of those drones and then slip back to sight once we're about 60 seconds, 90 seconds into the round. Because last time round, there was a lot of control given over very early to the side of Secret that let them get set up for that execute.
Yeah, I think they've got to take a, a little bit of confidence from that last round. You know, they, they stood up to them well. They held on to the Jacuzzi breach. They got the kills on main stairs and inside of sight. And let that get you your confidence. Let that grow a little bit. And like you say, just get up in the faces of secret. You know, don't give them too much respect here. Don't let them have that time to move through the map so quickly. I think it took them about a minute last time and secret was starting to open hatches. They're doing it exactly the same. Ruby went in through Jacuzzi last time. We'll have the Hibana opening stock hatching about 20 seconds if it's the same. So yeah, for me, ends need to be a little bit more disruptive to this attack. Do. At least to begin with. That's also keeping himself poking up around lounge. Right sort of ID. You can see Secret really, at least Miracle up here on the top floor with June running around on the outside. Trying to get a little bit of threat on towards the window here as well. So Azox gets forced to step back. He gets a bit too cheeky about this one. Could find himself in trouble. June at least being respectful of the threat as well. Drone following him down those blue stairs and June knows now that his target is long gone. So he can go back to whatever he was doing before. Or just going to be playing that role under his motor hatch, electrical in hand, ready for the sound cue that's going to tell him that he can deploy it and try to get the trick onto the ex Kairos pellets. But for the time being, we'll see how that goes. It's going to be activated. The Thatcher really should be able to deal with this, but we just nice thought block. the electrical was taken off just before. I don't think it's been employed in time. There's a second EMP comes in, that gets the job done, and that's good attention to fundamentals from Team Secret. It is, yeah. If they didn't use the second EMP there, they were going to be absolutely toast. I mean, the, I guess the thing would have been they still have two EMPs left, and Adrian has got a lot of those ex Cairo still in back pocket. So they would have had a second bite at the Cherry to really make that work out. I'll also give it over to Nakio as well. Really good spot to be in where he drew it off the wall immediately and instantly redeployed it, just dancing around that EMP. It's a good awareness from him as well to play it so actively. Miracle getting down to the bottom now. The line of sight that we often see opened up in Moto. Out comes the Nitro, though. If you're going to play default, you've got to expect default. And that's exactly what that Nitro is. Brilliantly thrown there. Catches his man. Five versus four. Savage battling for his life on the Moto oh. door. But he can't keep it. It's Skies. Who else? He's going to swing around and slam Savage in Moto. Five versus three. And ends are looking much better on this Church Arsenal defense than last time but here comes secret specifically adrian stepping his way through has already managed to find skies he's the man of the moment to get rid of finds the kill maybe he gets the plant down as well here and group is in a great spot to make this work are they aware that he's laid down tucked in i think they have the right sort of idea as adrian now hits the deck it's groovy and doom to win it out against three tim yeah, not going to be easy. They're up against the Maestro, the clutch machine in the outer. Of course, we know once that's reloaded, they really don't need to take any uh, chances to put more bullets in. There it is, the second kill that they needed. 1v1, it's going to be Groovy that's left alone to try and sort this out. 11 seconds left to go. Azox is the man who's going to have to just try and bait this. Groovy comes in, it's an easy mop-up. And Team Secret, they managed to get themselves a second successful attack on the basement. Real patience being shown by Groovy there as well. I mean, I'll give it over to Frenchie on the Maestro. Rather than trying to use the rotate in towards Church and taking a direct challenge, instead rounding his way in towards Arsenal through main corridor to then take a challenge. Really smart, because I think he didn't realize where the Ash was, and it was a massive risk for him to go swinging onto a blind corner without the real knowledge of where she was. So it was good adaptation from him, but Groovy played it so well, hyper patient, and just said, look, guys, I'm not going to spring into action, look for a kill. I'll wait here. I've got a great angle. The minibar's been blown up. I can see the diffuser where it sits. And things become nice and easy to close from there. This is that initial push that came through to open things up for them to get the plant down as well. Again, a good bit of work being done by Adrian is pushing towards right there to first get the kill and then second get the plant down itself. But again, man of the moment for me was Groovy there. Well... We've got two very evenly matched teams by the looks of things at the minute. Ends have been unable to get it done down in the basement. Top floor more successful. So we'll see whether that trend continues as they're going to be playing in CCTV and cash this time around. Secret, I think, you know, this is a big round for Secret. You feel like if they can get this one done, um, and there is always the opportunity for a pretty default attack here. If you get the breach wall, get top garage catwalk sorted, you should generally be able to get a diffuser plant down so there is an opportunity for team secret here they don't need to overcomplicate this win a couple of gunfights and you're going to be in you're going to be getting the round wrapped up and then all of a sudden it's not 2-1 it's 3-1 you've got then that little bit of breathing space 
exactly what you're looking for. Anyway, Secret are up to one. They've got those two attacks maybe they're looking for in this half. They don't want to convert far more with the sort of start they've had so far. And in this round, Tim, cannot ignore those heavy execution-focused tools. They've got six hard breach gadgets in back pocket, admittedly. Might be a tickle overkill. However, you'll take it. You've got the Capital and the Grim on slide. Those are really the two key operators for this execute. So keep a close eye. More, mo most likely to be on Adrian, who's probably brought along the Capital here to help get control of Garage itself. Try and force guys back. This is why you see things like the Wamai getting brought along here to help catch out those firebolts. So it's going to take a little bit of team coordination from Secret here, get the flashies in, burn through the magnets, and then have the firebolts coming onto the skies immediately off the back of that. Might have just ignored it though, Tim, and said, you know what, forget about that. Direct for sight. It certainly could be uh, an option with the smoke bolts that the Capitao brings, but this is the problem you get when you don't deal with catwalks, guys. Steps down the stairs and takes Savage out of the round. That Sky's onto Savage twice in a row now that he's come out on top. The fees from Grim are just going to hold and They're not going to hold him in place. Skies is getting getting a little bit confident. He's willing to take these fights even when he's pinged out. And he's going to hold his position. There comes the Capitao Bolt. Surely his days are numbered. Dealt with pretty well in the end by Secret. But it's taken quite a lot of time. And they haven't really got a very clean breach to deal with either. And they lost Savage in the process as well, which is a real stinger there. There'll be question marks around how the hell he has managed to get his way up the stairs in the first part. Sorry, down the stairs to take that challenge onto Savage. You pushed him below, but they've still got a spot here, Tim. 4v4 with a whole minute left to play. That's a lot of time to make this execute work. They've had the breach all this time as well. Adrian has actually moved over here and taken this spot. So forget about trying to look in through the breach. Instead, they've got Groovy watching that spot. It's lining up for a classic execute here. Miracles in below finds one, but they missed the trade as well from main door. Yeah, they've got to be picking that one up because whilst Miracles are around underneath, it means they can't play inside a lounge, and this is exactly what they wanted. Frenchie going underneath, opening up that default plant spot and making it dangerous. June goes in, but he is going to be visible. There you go. Easy as that. And that's why you've got a clear and control lounge. It's not enough to just get a kill in there. Friendship with a double on the round and doing big, big work for NC. Rikos cuts down the final man. Ends pick up round four, and it's 2-2. Two -two. Did not enough, Tim, to have two French-dominated teams in EU that are pretty damn good because we're seeing the same amount of ends on some of these defenses. I know it's so early on. But it looks like we're going to have three potentially French teams competing up towards that top end of competition. Really good start from them on the defense so far as well. Liked how they handled that both around playing Garage itself, but also the way they played out the round end, even with a couple of things getting a bit messy, like Miracle getting that first kill and missing the trade from Lounge 2. Just overall good, solid gameplay from both teams. I think although we've seen the right sort of idea coming out, at least on the attacking side as well, a couple of things you'll be asking questions around, such as when they're trying to push in towards uh, Garage there at the start of the round, Savage just a little bit disconnected from the rest of the team. Like I said here, freely swung on, so we'll be asking questions like, guys, like, come on, there's two of you outside the door, what's going on? As you can see there, the work that French is doing down underneath as well, just key to keeping that round, drop the man trying to make the plant, and just made life really, really difficult for Team Secret. So we move on then to round five. It's going to be back over to Jim and Bedroom this time around. It was Ence that won this site back in round two, and it was really a, a lack of ability to get that jacuzzi breach, I think, which really hurt Secret. It left them trying to push up main stairs to get that other angle of attack to mean that they weren't just pushing from construction, you know, in, in sort of completion. And it was difficult for them. They lost the fight on there. Azox was able with support to hold them off. And I think Team Secret definitely need to have an answer to that jacuzzi wall this time and really stretch ends a little bit more. Do they do. I really like the objective focus that we've seen so far. Admittedly, Clubhouse does bring in that style of play where, you know, getting the plant down is a big focus, but every single round that has been Ence's go-to. Really kind of seen the, the chaos unfold around that end of round plant two. For some of the maps, sometimes you'll see potentially 10 rounds go by and barely a plant goes a down. It's much more about the scraps that ensue around the bomb sites itself. And maybe that speaks a little bit into the more defensive style that we've seen coming out of events. This wall here could go on through. They've tried to get the trick on through, but it's simply not going to happen. Three players all working in tandem there, Tim, to ensure that this wall gets opened up. Yeah, much better. And that's basically Team Secret recognizing, hey, that was a big problem last time around and we struggled because of it. So this time making sure that they've absolutely got it. So 
sorted the question is, have they sorted the cash side? And the answer right now is no. Ents are still lodged inside of there. That means they can't play onto the windows because they have the threat of Nako managing to get out onto there and cause them some problems. The breach in CC should help them, but Doom cannot hold this angle forever. He's going to have to move off at a point. And for now, at least, he'll hold it for as long as he can, Tim. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 impatience pace, as we've seen so many times, and he almost gets it. There's been a good few almost kills across this game so far, and sadly, Tim, that is another, but two kills fly on through for the side of Secret. Yeah, big kills there that might just help power them through. However, they on, need Greg. to think about CCTV. Groovy is playing on the windows, is low health and could potentially be cut down, but ends very unlikely to have an opportunity to try to get anybody back in there now. They're just going to be playing sort of backs to the wall inside of sight. Skies, however, is alive. Seven and three so far on the day. Going big for Enz and a great debut from him. He's got Azox backing him up. 35 seconds left to go. Secret have got no Numbers, but they've also taken a lot of damage along the way. Adrian, however, spots his opportunity. He gets in and starts putting that diffuser down. Oh, Skies, I was going to say, if he manages to get the kill onto Groovy here, it would have been huge, but didn't quite manage to find it. And now Azox has got it all to do by himself against three players with the diffuser down, in sight of the window, not too far away from the breach. This one is one of those that you need a real stroke of God's luck here to get this over the line. Yeah, I think very unlikely for Azox at this point. Comes around, oh, what a beautiful shot it is. That was absolutely fantastic reactions. <laughs> Goes to find Adrian. Cannot quite pick him up on the angle, but Azox at least does I mean, get his one on his way out, but it wasn't quite enough. And Secret take another attacking round. It's 3-2. At least Adrian's hair looked happy about that, given I couldn't see any of his face. <laughs> One of them people that like to eat his monitor while he's playing, it seems. Pixel sniffing, as we call it sometimes. But yeah, another good round coming out on the attacking side of things. That was definitely one of the more... I'm not going to say chaotic, but aggressive rounds coming out of Ents on the defense. You know, the fights weren't really taking place around the actual diffuser going down. It was in these rooms that are perimeter rooms to the actual site itself. It was around construction. It was around Lodgy. It was around the breach. And it was only when we got down to that sort of three versus two situation that we saw the diffuser finally getting put down. But it was enough. They've got themselves a real good position here, Tim, I think, going into that second half of this game. We see Twister in the background there. Of course, the team secret coach um, just uh, giving the shoulders a little rub, encouraging his players on. And they're going well so far. I think he'll be happy with what he's seen. Uh, a 4-2 half would be ideal for them. Ents are certainly keeping themselves in this. They're keeping it uh, difficult for secret, but they are back down to that basement site. They've tried to hold on to it twice. It's been Attackers unsuccessful both times. Secret have been able to get it done. It is fair to say the second attempt, I think, was a little... A little bit closer from ends, but still, Team Secret have actually planted both times that they've been on this site. Adrian, first of all, inside of Armory, then behind black boxes in church, and um, playing Osser and Hibana. So it kind of doesn't really matter who he's on, he's still managing to get that diffuser down in the basement. So that's something ends definitely need to deal with. Um, you know, they've gone for a similar lineup. I'm just wondering how they're going to stop that plan. Yeah, I think the big thing to really observe here is a change, but it feels like a minor one is that leaning towards the Mossy being brought in alongside the Mutes. And many uh, old school fan will recall Why the SSG Rome on this map that consisted of Vigil, Castle, Mute, and Mossy. And they're normally a variable, sometimes a smoke, playing actually down in the basement itself. Whereas here, you've got a bit of a variant of it coming along where the Legion is on side, stopping any of those fast pushes coming on through. The memory at much the same, but it's about getting out and being active around the map and looking to stop down the attackers. So they're forced into making mistakes later in the round. But as far as things have started, Tim, Marty's offline, Rykos shut down early on. Good start for Secret once again. Yeah, Secret have done a great job there. So that's going to lock those Mozzie Pests. Well, the, any, anything that was captured by Mozzie Pests, rather, if he's picked up any drones, it's going to lock them in place. They can't be moved. They can't be relocated now. Um, and they're at the mercy of Secret finding them and taking them out. That's if any were captured. Quite often, the Mozzie is more used just to create black spots at a pro level. You know, you don't expect the players to be sort of running their drones into those pests too often. But it does prevent them, of course, getting them into areas so they then have to face check. So that's not going to be the case now as they're fairly comfortable. I think that they've got the space that they need. Nako's going to be shut down. No, it's Sky's actually taken down by June. Oh. Nako's still fighting inside a bar. But again, this is something that we've seen a number of times from Ents. There's just those missed opportunities for trades. Again, there's been so many of these almost kills coming out as well. It's a little bit heartbreaking to see. 
you know, a couple of bullets connect, but the other player doesn't fall down, whereas at least in this round, Secret hitting every single shot that they're coming into. They go with the right sort of idea that there is a player trying to push on through. Miracle losing half his HP to that impact as well, 60 damage. If you get a nice clean hit, one more will be enough to get the finish. And there we go, the Goo Mine coming in big, shotgun out, but sadly, the Rotero just forcing him a little bit too far wide there, and Miracle brings him down. Yeah, he's done some great work up there in Barra's the lesion, to be fair. The question is, has it burnt enough time? Three versus two. Can Frenchy and Azox hold on downstairs? You know, they're really going to have their work cut out here. We've seen Secret do late uh, attacks on here and come away with the win. That's a bold move, getting that reinforced. It just reduces a little bit of the pressure that's potentially going to come in from Moto Hatch. Azox just being moved along there by that Rotero drone, but 10 seconds left to go. It's going to come down to a bloodbath. Here comes the flood, and Frenchy goes with a big swing, but can't find the second. It's 1v2. Savage has to try and stick this. The cover is in place. Need to win this fight. Frenchy takes the peak, knows exactly where he is, but cannot hit his shots, and it's going to be Doom to pick up that final kill secret. They take another late round win in Church and Arsenal. Three for three, and they're going to be happy with that 4-2 half. Absolutely mega to pick up four rounds on your first to go attacking here on club at the very start of EUL. Absolute dream territory. Maybe suggest again that we're going to see a particularly strong secret coming into the rest of this competition. But I said they'll be absolutely delighted with that first half as well. Big objective focus. I think some questions will maybe come around ends that it was a little too little, a little too late coming out in that game in terms of getting out in the map and looking to keep busy. I know they whiffed a few shots and didn't quite connect onto the kills that they were looking for, of which secret were more than happy to capitalize. But I think overall, you can see that this is heading a secret way. However, Tim, I always say it, two halves to a game of Siege. Things could look very, very different in these next six rounds. Yeah, there certainly is. And it's not, you know, always too much of a surprise to see attackers having wins on Clubhouse. Uh, it is something that happens. If, if there's anything that ends can really improve, and I think we see it a little bit there. You know, it's just hitting those shots when the, you know, the opportunity's there. And I, I know that, you know, you probably sat there thinking, you know, you don't, you're not fit to please clean these players' minds, you know, and you'd probably be right with me personally. But, um, you know, you, you're in Pro League, you're in EUL, you're not going to get more than half a second of a chance before somebody like Doom is just going to slam your headshot, shut down, job done. So when those sniffs of chances come along, you've got to be taking them. And we've seen Ence a couple of times just missing the opportunity for trades. The timing maybe not quite going their way. You know, that second shot's just moving around the corner as they come around. You know, they they just need a little bit more, a little bit more luck and to take the chances with the gunfights. They do, they do. Well, let's see how things build out from here. At least to start with, got the Kaid holding up nice and close. Miracle. Expecting something to happen, but don't really imagine you to see too much focus on the dirt tunnel, at least to kick things off. Instead of much more of a focus, in fact, to say that now, here he is, ready to go. EMP coming on through as well. Feels to me, Tim, like they've ridden to the strap block a little bit there. They know what to expect here coming out from ends, because rather than starting their way inside the map, but a couple of players, the Thatcher included, starting outside of it instead. Yep. Good progress uh, from Enz so far. Started burning through those impact nades, just getting the Xkaros pellets on the hatch two by two because they know they're going to get shot off. They're going to get impacted off. There's going to be all sorts of stuff going on to prevent them getting that breach, but they will continue plugging away at that, no doubt, to try and get it done. 12 still left in pocket for Skies, so certainly no panic yet. However, Savage However. is up on the top floor in cash. And I'm a little bit concerned that Ents might not have picked him up. All right, well, for now at least, Ents probably got to worry much more about thinking about this execute, and that's exactly going to be the thing that comes back to bite them. Still two EMPs left, so they'll have the chance to get the far hatch opened up. But like you say to me, if he manages to stab him in the back as this round goes on, they're in trouble. Now they'll heal too much coming out here as well. A second EMP comes on through, which means this will get done. I don't to retrieve either of them as well. This is pretty much done, but at this point, they're not going to be of too much use to you. Away, they back into church. Landed in both of those electric claws and savaged him. He's on the hunt. He certainly is. It depends just how well the flank drones have been set up, but with nobody dead at this point, it can be a little bit difficult sometimes to keep people on them constantly oh, to know it's coming. Here comes Savage. Almost certainly going to get a freebie. There it is onto Skies. I think Skies actually knew he was going. Maybe heard him was looking for that challenge, but Savage was just way more ready for it. And not only that, he disappears off back into the map. So with 30 seconds left to go, and 
Vince need to worry about where Savage is going to reappear. And where does he reappear? Oh, man. On the hatches that they've opened. Fantastic play from Secret. And Enz just falling down on the information game a little bit. Find themselves now one versus four. It becomes one versus three with 15 seconds. If only that one moment from Skies would come down to a win for him rather than a win for yeah, Savage. There wouldn't have been a 2K to Savage's name in this round, but Naquo has got no time left Five him. Three go. players left. All the discipline you'd ask for being shown by Team Secret to let this round end comfortably in favor of Team Secret. Up to five and two, they go. Yep, starting to just cruise a little bit now, finding their feet um, and looking very good, Team Secret. I think there's a couple of lessons for ends to learn there, and that's obviously thoroughness of drawing. It has to be there. If you haven't drawn something if there's something preventing you you got to go in and face check it you just can't leave it alone you find out exactly why savage comes down main like you say if that gunfight goes the other way and funnily enough as i picked up on at the end of the previous round as coming into this half i said you know it's the gunfights a little bit they're just missing those opportunities and i know that it sounds hypercritical savage has been pretty much pre-fired him as he comes around the corner he knew the swing was coming so yeah it's going to be very very difficult to win but it just might so the more and more of those fights where you look and think, oh, if they get that, then the round goes differently. And it just feels like it, a lot of those are going against ends at the minute and they need to try and turn that around. That's exactly why this timeout here is the thing, Tim, to help them try and get yeah. themselves back on the wagon and get them back into fighting form because some of the early rounds back in the first half as well weren't particularly against and they were picking up the entry in at least half of those rounds and going good. But the problem was then conversion into the winning rounds. Two of the rounds where they got the entry, they would still go on to lose, which tells you a little bit about ends, but also quite a bit about secret and their ability to get things done, even having lost one of their early players in the round. This one here, I think as we both touched on a few times now, it does come down to Savage not being sniffed out. It looks like they had him on a flank drone, but just simply could not control him. And he really sport the round for them. In round eight, we go towards gym and bedroom. And sadly, Tim, I think with how things are going so far, it doesn't look like we'll have what we had in Japan for all but two of the games, which is 12 rounds of regulation or overtime guaranteed. Yeah, we saw an awful lot of action in Japan with some very, very even matches. But like you say, this one so far at least, has been a little bit of a landslide in Secret's direction. However, I'm going to back end to make a little bit of a comeback into this. I think, you know, they're now moving away from that primary site. They're going on to attack in the top floor. And I think there's definitely rounds that they can win. What I want to see here is some good fundamentals. If you're not having the, you know, the look of the draw with those gunfights, if you're just losing out by half a second of time in each time, then let's get everything else right. Let's give yourself those advantages just positions to try and make it difficult for Team Secret to win them. So I want to see CCTV open, which they're working on now. Let's get Jacuzzi Breach done. Logistics Hatch open. Let's make it really difficult for Secret to play where they want to play. I think the thing is, Tim, the exact opposite is happening because you've seen Castle Barricades going in downstairs. Oh, yeah. FNAT seemingly everywhere down there as well. Just everything that by the looks of it, Secret can do is just slow Ents down. And where Ents' game plan was more leaning in towards the mute and the mossy, the denial of the information, the heavy roam here. For the most part, Secret said, you know what? Like, we don't actually want to play that too far away from Sight. Enough that they can, of course, play out towards the extended hold, as we often see in Groovy, looking more than prepared to go for a challenge here as well. But again, they just look like they're quite happy to play relatively in close proximity to the site itself and then worry about denying them as the round wears on. Yeah, I mean, looking at the lineup here for Ents as well, four hard breaches on site, pretty much. I'd, I'd, I'll put Buck sort of half in the category. He's got the hard breach gadgets, but, you know, primarily a soft breacher. But other than that, they've got Hibana, they've got Maverick, they've got Thermite. There is absolutely no excuse whatsoever for not opening up every single site of this bomb site, and it looks like they've done that they've got lodgy hatch they've got construction wall cc wall jacuzzi wall right now the site is looking like a piece of swiss cheese and ends just need to get in and start taking a few bites there so i want to find you know they want to see a couple of kills now give themselves the man advantage and a real chance to win this one Again, it's the hurdles that keep getting put up, though. Just run that clock closer down to the ground. Same with the Flores as well, has now finally worked his way through all those Rateros. And now you've got to deal with the next round of utility, which is two C4s in the back pocket. You've probably got FNATs to chew through, so you can still see two of those are active around the map here, too. There's just still more walls for them to work on through. Anju playing on the downstairs, but Rikos with a critical kill, will remove the castle on the downstairs, and that's one less threat to worry about. But this C4 team, it could be the one!
Elio! And it goes and finds one. Miracle on the swing for the second. Rounds for main stairs, but the site concedes all that he can see. And now Rykos yeah. has got it to do against two. Groovy and Adrian stand in his way, and a match point is abound. It's not just two, it's two people that have really been finding their shots so far today. He hasn't bothered to pick up the diffuser. That tells us one thing. Rykos is going for kills and flashing himself is certainly not going to help the situation. Goes in, tries to take out the mirror. Will do. Prevent its use at least. Sees one move behind logistics desk. Is he going to find either of them? Yes, no one. Cannot find the second as Adrian stands tall for Team Secret once again and closes out around, sending them now on to match point. It's 6-2. Adrian ain't going to lose that. He ain't going to lose that while he's playing like he is today. Absolutely nuclear at the start of the game and bringing up big at a time when it looked like Rykos might be able to pull out the one versus four, but denied at the bitter end of things. Unfortunate, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. That secrets him up to six and two, and things are looking a little bit hilly, shall we say, for the side events to now climb. Understandably, uh, the ends players just looking a little bit sullen there. Just, uh, you know, you can see the, the, the weight of the game is sitting on them. Be this is beautiful from Miracle. Gets the first, gets the second. It's such a difficult one because I want to look at that and say, you know, the Nitro's come over the top. The focus is still on smashing the mirror window. You're not ready for the fight that's, you know, likely going to come after it. But at the same time, if you don't smash the rear window, then Miracle's swinging with a clear view of what he's coming into. He can pre-aim it, pre-fire it. So there's not really, it's a lose-lose situation, friends, there. Um, you know, I really thought they might have another round or two in them, but at this point, I'm not too sure. They sort of did everything right there. They got all the walls open. They got the opening kill. They took down June. They, you know, did everything they needed to. But then it's just these moments coming out of secret the miracle double that you know in that case just turned it on its head and they always seem to have an answer at the minute all right well now we get to see naco tell you what his name is really throwing me i know it's naco but i keep going to say naco and i know it's wrong but it keeps on getting me it'll stick in eventually too i'm sure it's not require a few more games or maybe a few more rounds he's on the maestro coming in for this right the maestro what's wrong with me on the monty in this round coming out we saw a lot of this being brought along out in japan salty formerly of rejects now absolutely dominating teams on skyscraper back on day one with the operator I feel when you see well, uh, a Monty player again that has really taken time to get used to the new changes, he's even more oppressive than he was before, Tim. He certainly is. Um, of course, anybody not familiar with those new changes, Monty is able to look around behind the shield without moving his body. Um, he can just move his POV now um, to feed information without sort of exposing his flanks. Um, he also has the ability to sprint um, with his shield a bit more like how Blitz used to do um, or can do. So it just gives him a few different options, can reload behind his shield as well, so doesn't need to drop it for the reload. Um, so... Interesting changes. Um, the way that I sort of categorise it was, I think a, a good Monty player becomes an even better one, but uh, you know, a moderate Monty player I is probably going to struggle a little bit. They are, um, you know, sort of changes that work in both directions. I wonder if you're going to go as far as saying they'll now be terrible. But at this point, Napo has got to try and deal with these keeper barriers on the step up forwards. It works so far. Managed to get just in front and Booby realizing, oh God, I'm now in danger. The thing is, now when he drops the big shield, is he does expose his feet. However, the burn comes on through. The shield is out and Groovy is host him. Absolutely cooked up here on Catwalk, and that will start to open things up for the side events as we get into the final 60 seconds. Great fundamentals from Ents there taking Catwalk. Savage, however, once again Off is the man to step up and start causing problems. Taking that long line angle out of cash finds a great kill onto skies but there should be potentially an opportunity to get this diffuser down the only thing i'm concerned about friends is they're not controlling lounge at the minute there isn't anybody down there so it might be fine with the small canister bouncing back off the shield there not too often we see that he's down to one tick i was really worried which way he was going it's savage I can tell you what, just punishing them for anything they tried to do in this round. Has got himself onto a second. Adrian makes it number three, June number four. Frenchy with it all to do. Well, they're going to have to raise that white flag, I'm afraid. That's a team secret win, Tim, and a decisive one at that.
Yeah, Team Secret looking great there. Um, and, you know, a few things to go away and work on, I'm sure. But I think, you know, there was an element of it not being their day as well. Uh, but Team Secret have just taken advantage of every single mistake that was made. You love to see it. They've been hitting their shots. They looked electric so far today. Impressive stuff from Team Secret. And um, some of the players, you know, Adrian, particularly on his debut there as well. Miracle having a great game. Sort of everybody stepping up for Secret. Absolutely. I mean, again, a strong performance. I thought maybe we'd see one a little bit closer than that, but it feels, Tim, like at this stage, there's going to be a little bit of a rivalry forming between those two. We mentioned about the number of times they faced up last year. Nine maps, I believe the count was last time around. Just absolutely crazy. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's it's much more quicker than we expected. Um, Secret really dominating and sending a message ahead of themselves. Uh, indeed. Well, I believe we've got a quick break coming up, and then the desk will break it down for you. So, catch you guys in a little bit. No break, luckily, because we're back here, ready to analyze this game and what happened. Thank you so much, Ace and Death, for casting that very first game. But for Secret, a very smooth start to their Europe League in 2024, which started out as a very close game, ended up being a really dominant from them, but it was definitely Adrian sending out a lot there. Yeah, it's what you wanted to see from Team Secret. I think that was the challenge to them. Are Team Secret going to take the step up in 2024? If they were going to, they had to come out with a dominating victory. That is exactly what they did. Yeah, they dominated that game really well. And Adrian stood out so massively as well. He was super, super talented. But it was not only Adrian. Like, looking at the entire team, there was nobody who was, like, really exceptionally stood out or carried them today. They had a team effort. That's not something we usually use to see from Team Secret. With a team effort, how are the process looking like so far in Secret? It's early days, but what are we seeing? Yeah, I think that's the thing. Obviously, in the pre-match, we kind of questioned roles that we saw in terms of Malta. However, in the match itself, because of the map that they were playing, they were playing Clubhouse. In Clubhouse, there's very little room to have fraggers and supports. Everybody's got some kind of utility role to offer. Even the Ash with Mira being open and Maestro being on the body, that type of stuff, right? So everybody's got some kind of supporting role on Clubhouse. So we don't yet know if they've changed their, their roles since Malta. However, their performance, their teamwork, their discipline, everything was excellent from Secret Today. There really is no kind of faults that you can find. No, there were no gaps. There were no opportunities for ends players to actually make any aggressive plays, for example, flanking or anything like this. Secret had everything under cover. They had all the control of the map in the world, and they also played it very well in their gunfights. The only fights that they really allowed ends to have were one-on-ones fair fights, which then again, they aren't fair because as an attacker, you have a much better gun. So honestly, Secret's attack half, that was what impressed me the most. I think they completely outplayed ends. And played a better team today. Yeah. I think even even the two rounds they lost, right? Yeah. The two rounds they lost is where they fumbled the bag a little bit trying to deal with a player in catwalk, which happens from time to time. Yeah. And then playing for a plant a little bit late in the round. That's all. Very good performance. And Sky's 4K. Obviously, you can't look away from something like that, right? So it's, yeah. When one player has that one of a round, be you can't happy. do much about it. Further on to ends, Fabian. Their start to Europe League so far. How is it looking? How are we feeling? Honestly, they just played a really, really good team today. I, I saw a secret that I didn't expect to be at the level that they were. So I don't think that ends has too much to worry about so far. I mean, we need to have more consistency from the players. In round two, Sky's got a 4K. After that, we didn't see that much happening from him. And we need more to happen from these players. Because those star fraggers, because we mentioned, or I mentioned, Raikos and Sky's first, right? They didn't shine today. I think Ents have kind of been operating at this like tier 1.5 level, right? Where the tier 1 teams hadn't really shown them the respect they deserved over the last six to nine months, but they were far better than the tier 3 teams. Now they've hit the big leagues. Now they've hit EUL. Teams will be showing them that respect. They will be preparing for them and they will be putting in solid performances. And I think Ents kind of suffered with that today. Yeah. Um, you know, fell down a little bit. Obviously, they've lost to Secret the last couple of times they played them when they've been taken a little bit more seriously. They need to find that strategical depth where they don't rely on the same thing over and over. And as you say, Jack, once they get started once, they will always be broken apart. More strategic depth, and I think we can see a much better team. We talked about it at the very beginning of this post-game desk with Adrian, a player that really stood out in the specific game. Yeah, and it's mostly about how he comes in here and he puts on a new debut, right? He comes in and he plays incredible. First round, he drops a triple kill in one-on-one -on -one clutch on top of that. That is something you don't see very often, especially not from a new guy on the block, right? Usually you feel all that pressure in the world. You're going to be struggling a little bit, but once you have that triple kill to start the game off with, all that pressure that you have and all of that nervousness, it just drops away. And when you have a game like that, honestly, just all of Secret played amazingly. I'm super, super happy for Adrian. And just anything that he does, he was really, really good of game. Couldn't have a better debut. 
definitely looks strong for him today on his very first game here. But we have moved over to our screen here because we should have an interview lined up and that should be with none other than Savage from Secret. Savage, it's good to speak to you. How are you feeling after this very first victory in 2024? Hello, good to speak to you guys again as well. Um, it's a good first victory, uh, quite, uh, quite calm one, not our game. So uh, yeah, I'm happy with the team performance. We we came in with a good game plan. We executed it well. We didn't. No one felt like uh, under any pressure. We were able to play very well. So that's why you need to win the games. Come in with a good plan and execute it. Savage, the uh, the two players that you've picked up, Adrian and Doom. Tell me a little bit about them and why you picked up those two players specifically. Uh, right. So Doom has been under my radar, so to say, for a while now. Such players you're playing against the in FPL. And he has that kind of very unique play style that he's just so annoying to play against. Every time I played against him, I felt so annoying to play against. Where he's always on your feet, he's always like switching it up. One round he'll hide, one round he'll play for super aggressive. And that's just his individual skill that he showed on the uh, majors and everything. Obviously, he's a, a great player. Uh, and as soon as we knew that we could get him on the board, like he wasn't, like without two doubts, we just mm -hmm. was going to get him. While Adrian on the other side was a, a player that was obviously being talked about uh, in the tier two scene uh, quite recently. And once we got to trial him, we saw a, a good potential for another role that we uh, weren't expecting him to be able to. That was the more support kind of role for his really good uh, execution of everything. He's very cautious with everything he does. And he's very a very perfectionist uh, kind of player. And he has really good comms, especially for a young player. It was just like, he, he has, he has no flaws, you know? He's got a real individual skill. He's got good comms and he's got like the, the character is of a support player. So we were like, let's try him on that. And on, even on Charles, he played very well on it. And we're like, okay, that that's, looks like a perfect fit for us. And so far it's been like that. Uh, with still some adjustments to do, maybe take some weight off the, his shoulders with uh, some other kind of operators because he's new. We want him to as well feel comfortable. And uh, obviously there's some roles on this game that are very uh, not rewarding. And it can be hard mentally for some players. And obviously we take a strong mentality. I don't think that'll be a problem. Mm -hmm. but obviously we don't want to make it too, uh, you know, too much for him. So yeah, it's just about finding balance. Like this map was perfect showing of him. Great performance individual by him, getting the bomb down again, like just how he did in our last time on Team Alta and still getting the kills, getting the clutches, getting everything. Amazing pickup. Nice. Both of them. You know, I like this tactic as well. This player is so annoying to play against. Let's pick him up on our team so we don't have to play against him anymore in the near future. But when we yeah. talk about the near future for your team, of course, tomorrow you have the off day. And then after that, you play Virtus Pro. How are you feeling about that? I think it'll be a a similar game plan for to this kind of a uh, good individual skill like players but slow team that plays for executes so again just playing for our win conditions coming in with the game plan execute again and uh, happy for ourselves obviously can't disclose too much on that but on the game plan but yeah hopefully we can uh, do the same as today understand you don't want to be giving away too much on the very first day but thank you so much for willing to talk to us a very detailed explanation about the two pickups thank you so much and of course we hope to speak to you again very soon Thank you. Hopefully I can speak to you guys again soon as well. See you guys later. All right, and with that, we will be sending it to a break because that was only our first best of one of the day. We have three more and we'll talk about that second one right after a break.